So hi there, welcome back to ERP College, to our Yes for Nana video series. Today we are going to see the uh, database in the Yes for Hana, the new tables and architecture of Yes for Hana system. What has been changed in the Yes for Hana? We are going to briefly discuss uh, in this video. So we'll start with this code. Uh, traditionally, businesses has to make choice between broad and deep data analytics or the simple and speedy reporting. So uh, prior to S4 HANA or HANA database, or in general, we can say that uh, businesses has to uh, make a choice between how they want to handle their database data. Either they can go for a deep and broad data analytics or a speedy and simple data analytics. When we go broad and deep, the speed, we have to compromise on the speed because due to the large data volumes that our databases or the traditional uh, memories could not handle. And if we go for the speed, then we have to keep the things simple. We can't go deep and broad. So this is this was the hard choice that traditionally business, businesses has to make since the limitation on the database side or on the memory side, right? So we'll move forward and we'll see what, what are we going to discuss in the, in the in this session or in this video. So we are going to discuss about OLAP and OLTP concepts. Then what are the S4 database? We will brief about S4 database. Then the tables and compatibility views and then the architecture design of S4. So stay tuned, it, will be a, it is going to be a very informative session. So now when we talk about o OLAP and OLTP, these two concepts mainly uh, came into focus light uh, since the Esperana and uh, I'm sure a lot of you might have heard these terms here and there. So now today we are going to uh, get clarification on both the concepts, like what does it stands for and what does it actually mean. So in past, business has to manage two separate systems, right? If you remember, one is for the transactional data and other one is for reporting data. So here we are talking about uh, in terms of SSE, uh, in terms of SAP, ECC and BIBW system, right? So we all know who uh, in medium to large scale organizations where the data volumes is huge, our ECC system is not able to manage the fast reporting. And hence many businesses or almost all of the businesses or organization has to opt for the BIBW system, right? So BIBW system, uh, is a system which gives us speedy reporting and uh, the data analytics and data transformations are uh, faster than the ECC in the in in, in BIBW. So why this was the uh, this was there? So this was due to the data models which were uh, unable to process and analyze data with a speed <clears throat> with the same speed in in the with the same with the speed in same database. So this is termed as OLAP and OLTP. So OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing and OLAP stands for Online Anal Analytical Processing, right? So uh, our ECC system was a OLTP system, right? Online Transactional Data Processing. So ECC was made to process the large or huge volume of data or transactions. So thousands of users can post thousands and lakhs of data records or transactions at a time into the ECC system. And ECC was made uh, uh, such a way where they where it can process all of those transactions and store all of those transactions in the database, right? ECC, <clears throat> so uh, in a simple terms, uh, in simpler terms, we can say that ECC, it's, ECC was something which was uh, uh, smarter in terms of recording the data and storing it in the database. but when it comes to BIBW, which is OLAP uh, uh, based system, which is online anal analytical data processing. So BIBW system was a smarter or is smarter to read the data out from the database, right? So the the catch here is that in, uh, in past or uh, earlier to S4 HANA or HANA database, it was not possible to have OLTP and OLAP both the processes in single database. So due to this, business has to have the two separate systems with these two separate processing where they have to do the reporting via other system and record the data in another system. So this was a big challenge that was there before S4. 
and uh, you know uh, so so with the data structure business has to maintain data in two database one will process data record uh, and the other one will analyze it but for it to happen the data needs to be transferred from one database to another one so live data reporting was almost impossible and in most of the cases today's reporting were available tomorrow right so uh, we since we have to maintain two separate databases uh, the data capturing is going to happen in one database and then reporting was going to happen from the another database then uh, suddenly we have to move the data from the source database to the target database where the reporting is was going to happen so this transfer was happening overnight right so if today whole day users will record the data capture the data in uh, ecc system and overnight all of those recorded data will be transferred to the ecc system and everything will be captured in the ecc uh, sorry bibw system and everything will be captured uh, again captured in the another database where from that database reporting is was going to happen right so this this was the scenario so live data reporting was like out of question but the latest that you can get was tomorrow today's data can be reported tomorrow so that was huge time gap uh, that was there considering uh, the year or the era we are in right so this was this was the biggest challenge that yes for uh, all hana database has solved right so when it comes to S4 database, we all know S4 is running on HANA database, right? So HANA database is capable to handle both OLTP and OLAP processes, processings, which means businesses does no longer have to use two separate databases to record the data and to report or to analyze the data, right? So reports can be generated right out of HANA database, real-time data reporting at every level of detail right when we say real-time reporting at every level of detail that means earlier to s hana when we used to transfer our data into a reporting system we obviously did not transfer the entire data line item wise and every object wise into the reporting system because we don't want to we basically want to reduce the footprint over the reporting database so, so that we can have a speedy reporting right so we will summarize the data on the account level or on the profit center level on the uh, different segments level. We will summarize the data and summarize data. We will send it to the reporting system so that reporting will only be happening on the summarized level, level of data. But since now s hana is capable to do the reporting and capturing of data from the single database, we can extract the report on the detail line item level. On, from the any of the object level, right? Because whatever we have recorded from any of that uh, recorded segments, we can do the reporting. I hope this point is clear to you. So yes, for Hana have also eliminated many aggregate and total table, right? So uh, again, before yes, for Hana, in order to do the faster reporting, uh, SAP had many aggregate tables and total table uh, uh, given as a, as a part of standard solution where this table used to summarize the line item or detail level data into a smaller and compact formats so that uh, reports can be generated out of those uh, aggregate tables in a faster way, right? But since HANA database uh, does not uh, uh, does not require those, those kind of modifications now, HANA database can give you the much faster reporting uh, even without the aggregate and index tables. So all of the index tables, all of the these aggregate tables have become absolute or in s they just reduce it. They just remove it in order to lower the footprint of data, right? So uh, if you are going to re record the data on the line item detail level as well as summarize level and uh, to on the total level, that is kind of two to three times you are recording the same data. So data footprint was increasing drastically, which was which is going away with the s -Prana. So uh, yeah, so this is what we uh, discussed in old system. In order to improve system performance, a summarization of data were stored in the totals and aggregate tables. Most of the reporting used to happen through this totals table, which did not had a detail level of data, right? So obviously on the aggregate level and on total level, it will be a total of uh, 
uh, n number of data, right? So detail level of reporting was not possible. So in Yasvana, the reports can the can be directly extracted from line item level table itself. So all of this reporting and uh, all this different different tables and all those things got away is because of these reasons. So we, we should know why the, every, I know, I'm sure everybody knows that these many tables have uh, become obsolete in S4 and this happened and that happened, but why it happened, what make it happen, right? So when, uh, when SAP got a breakthrough through the HANA database, because of that HANA database only, SAP got inspired into a writing whole new code of line as S4. So S4 HANA solution or S4 HANA ERP is totally a different ERP than the ECC. Each and every line of code has been rewritten for the S4 HANA database. All of this uh, was because of the capabilities of the HANA database compared to the uh, Oracle database that ECC was uh, running on, right? So we should, one should know these things. So moving forward, now coming to the tables and compatibility views. So uh, just as we discussed, all the index tables and total tables have become absolute. We can see here, uh, we can see here as well in the, in the PPT screenshot that the aggregate tables that have been moved, then index tables that have been moved, removed and then to, uh, and then not some of the uh, tables normal tables that had been uh, removed so this is just a list of tables which uh, which we use in our day to day life or which we were using daily in uh, in the ecc environment but uh, you can get anyway you can get a complete list of tables from uh, by downloading the simplification list from s for hana so uh, when we say these tables have been removed it does not mean that we cannot use them as a functional consultant. You can obviously use them. And if we have used this table in the back, in any of our programs, so uh, when we will convert our EC system into S4 system, all of those, all of these tables, wherever it has been read in any of, any of the program will be replaced through a CDS view. So these views indirectly will uh, redirect the uh, data source table to a Sidoka, a new line item table, instead of reading it through these, these tables, which are not, no longer there. But even uh, if we go into AC16 n or AC16 transaction and run these tables, still we can able to get the data on this uh, table level. But this table will is going only going to work as a filter on top of the AC Doka table or on or, or or the tables that are there, right? So this the when we when we'll execute the BSIS table or BSIS table in the S4 HANA, it does not mean that the data is going to read from the BSIS or BSIS table. It will just work as a filter, which will filter out the data from the AC Doka table, which will read the AC Doka table and just give us the result by filtering the data as per the BSI, BSIS format or BSIS format, right? So we know that this, this table have been have become obsolete, but still we can use it. So quickly, if we go into the uh, system, we can just navigate to AC 16 n and for example, this table or for example, BS AS table, right? Even if we, if we execute it, we can, we can see here, right? So uh, this is no longer a table and this is a CDS, uh, the CDS entity for this table is BSAS underscore view, right? It's a DDL table. But when we go for like AC Doka table, uh, the, that CDS view line goes away and we can see this is this is actually a table which we can execute it in, right? So BS, yes, if we just go, we can still execute these tables and it will still report us the data as it is used to report in the ECC. But just the difference will be uh, here. Here, just the difference here will be it will be going into a AC Doka and filtering out the data from the AC Doka, right? So, so far this much we have planned for this uh, video, but uh, this is our S4 HANA video series, which have recently started, and this is just the second video of it. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos where we will talk about a lot of new things from the S4 HANA. We will compare it with the ECC and Hopefully it will be a lot of value providing for you, all of you. So thank you.